The more I learn, the less I know. And that's, that's the tragedy of, of doing what I do. And I don't do it because I want to do it. I do it because I have to do it. Okay, my name is Pierre Odier. And now I'm a very proud 77-year-old. Uh, I am uh, retired as a school teacher and I am now just traveling trying to document vanishing minorities before they are extinct. My passion started as a school child investigating uh, the Roman ruins, Pompeii and so on, and then it uh, segued into Egypt and ever after that I was bitten and it was just a progression of curiosity trying to be satisfied, which never gets satisfied because there's always more. I ended up in 162 countries. But I, I want to be clear, numerically I do not pursue any of that. Some countries I've been there, like in China, like 12 times, and, and Bhutan I've been five times, Cambodia 12 times, so it's where my passion goes. It's, it's not a numerical thing. What you're looking at here is the structure of my uh, expeditions and travels. So for instance, when I go somewhere, before I go, I will take a book, which is a you know, $4 book, and then I convert it into my journal. The pages are cut, so that's all preparation. So that has to do with uh, inventory, travel, directory, so on. Then when you turn here, then this is the first day where I arrive, I have my thing. And then everything that occurs during that particular visit, everything that I encounter goes into this book. I was just curious about everything. And the philosophy is, nobody's gonna do it for you. So if you want it, and it's in your mind, get off and do it. And so I, at 17, I decided that someone was talking about Egypt, and they were talking about the pyramids, and they couldn't talk about it because I had to go see it. So I did, my parents weren't with it, and my father says, you can't go, and then my mother said, but you did say if he has the money, he can go. So I went. If I don't do something for a while, I get cat and fever. I get to the point where I'm going, why am I sitting here? Who, what is right and all that? So I have to go. And now it's just, I'm driven by something I do not know how to explain. I think the biggest frustration for me, with, like with you guys and everybody, is to share it. You come back so full of stuff, and there's nobody to, to share it. And most people don't know what you're talking about. They look at they look at this and say, what is this piece of wood here? Well, this is the head of a canoe of the crocodile headhunters of Papua New Guinea. And everything here has a story that's connected to, I want to say an exchange or a gift. That is, it's from the border from Laos and Burma. And this is from the upper Borneo region. Uh, it's a monkey skull that is carved, that is made as a fetish and a symbol. And uh, it's the same way they would carve a human skull, but I could not bring a human skull back to America. When I crossed Siberia on foot, and I went to all the gulags, which don't exist according to the Russians, and this is all the stuff that I picked up, the, looking back, I'm amazed that I got through customs with all that. That's all in my backpack and my camera bags and all. <laughs> I, I left uh, uh, Mongolia, crossed all of Siberia, and, and crossed the Bering Strait in a sealskin boat with the Eskimos to come back to America. Three and a half months. I do, I do try to be very careful with understanding the law of the country. Uh, and in terms of the route, I do plan and then I don't. Meaning I, I want to be totally open. I do meet the deadline of I have to leave the country, I arrive at a certain date and I have to leave at a certain date. When I was in, in uh, Papua New Guinea, and I was in this village, this is on the Sipic River way up there. I was with a guy who was guiding me the day before or three days before. And I asked for him the next as it was, John let's say. So he's dead. I said, why? Well, he was messing around with someone, so we killed him. And they moved over and they showed me his body there in his little hole with, with a plastic tarp on it. So I quickly realized that life is just like that. And if, if I'd been killed, there would nobody in the world would know. I'm not an adventurer that it wants to take risk to say I climbed the highest mountain, I jumped off the hill. Uh, uh, I'm an adventurer because I will go into some uncharted territory 
with very little information and just flow with it. I feel very comfortable that you can leave me here for an entire week and I speak to nobody and my mind is just going and even at night I can't even go to sleep and I have to get up because I'm doing something, looking at something or following something and all of a sudden you realize that there is never a time to be you. It's just you are, you're it and that's it. And the way I live, you could break both my legs and I would have projects to do in this house forever. All of this has affected me in my entire life, all of these decisions and that, but I cannot resist being who I am. I can't resist.